this video is over section 2.8, Intermediate Value Theorem. Before we go through our example problem, let's first go through what Intermediate Value Theorem says and hopefully get a better understanding of it. Your book gave a definition, but it probably took you a couple times to read through it and kind of get a grasp of what it says. But let's go through it and hopefully it'll be a little bit clearer um, after this explanation. Okay, so Intermediate Value Theorem, it says it in the name. It's interested in the intermediate value or some value in the middle, right? So what Intermediate Value Theorem says is that if we have a function that's continuous, that's the first point, it has to be continuous, like this, um, and there's some value down here, and later, some value up here, then there must be some value in the middle that's here. And honestly, that's really all IVT says. Um, it just says that if your function is continuous and it passes from this point up to this point, then there must be some value in the middle, C, such that f of C is in between these two points. And that's it. There's your message translation of IVT for you. Um, so let's go ahead and use this. Um, in an application and use it in this problem. So this example says, show that this function has a root in the interval negative one to two using the intermediate value theorem. All right, first, a root, if you remember back to algebra, the root of a function is just wherever it crosses the x-axis, wherever y is equal to zero. All right, and we're gonna prove that there's a root in this interval using IVT. Okay, so if you remember, first point of IVT, our function has to be continuous. So let's look at our function, and it's just a polynomial, and polynomials are always um, continuous when they're written like this. If it were a fraction or something, then we might need to worry about where the denominator is undefined, where it equals zero, because then it wouldn't be continuous at that point. But how it is now, we can plug in any x value we, value we want, and we'll get a valid answer in the end. So we know that this function is continuous. All right, so first point, check, function is continuous. Second point, we're looking for a root in this interval, or we're looking for a place where y equals zero. So going off of what we just said over IVT, it'd be really convenient if somewhere in this interval we went from some negative value to some positive value, because we know that if we're going from negative to positive, or the other way around, from positive to negative, then there must be some point in the middle, if our function's continuous, where we're crossing that x-axis and where y is equal to zero. All right, so let's start with, it, with this interval, plug it in, see what happens. So we'll start with negative one. We plug f of negative one into our function. We get two times negative one cubed minus five, negative one squared, negative one plus five. Plug all that in, you should get eight. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing with two. When you plug two in everywhere, you see an x, you should get negative 19. Convenient, right? We have a positive and a negative value. Okay, so just thinking about this, if we have some positive value here at 8, and then some negative value here at negative 19, and we already said that this function is continuous, I don't know what this function looks like, but I do know that in order to get from positive 8 down to negative 19, I have to cross this x-axis at least once. So I know that in this interval, there is a root between negative 1 and 2, because it goes from a positive value to a negative value. Okay. But when you're writing this on a test, let's go through um, the words you should say so that you say it in fancy mathematical terms. Okay, so a good way to write this as an answer is according to intermediate value theorem, since f of x is continuous on the interval negative one to two, because remember that was the first point that we had to verify, this function is continuous. And since f of negative one is equal to positive eight, and f of two is equal to negative 19, then there exists some value c where f of c is equal to zero. In other words, where there's a root. And that's about it for intermediate value theorem. So brief recap, intermediate value theorem, it's worried about the number in the middle. Um, and you can use this for questions other than ones that involve roots. Um, you can use it in a lot of different scenarios, but basically all it says is that if this function is continuous, it goes from some value down here to some value up here, then there must exist some value in the middle at x equals c, such that f of c is in between those two y values. And yeah, that's about it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. 
And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.